But Sarah Malik joins us, Nuveen Global Equity CIO, far too optimistic to be on uh, this show. State the bull case where this swoon, as you call it, is an opportunity. The bull case is around earnings growth for next year, which we think can be in the high single digits. But the concern today is whether yields are moving too far too fast. And the issue is that uh, as monetary policy becomes contractionary instead of expansionary, how do we get to this growth rate? What we're looking at is a strong consumer, strong manufacturing data. All of that should continue. And really what we're seeing here is growth is just being postponed. It's not evaporating in the third year of a bull market post the deep recession. We can see that strong earnings growth. It's going to come from the top line and pricing power because margins are at about decade high. So companies with pricing power who can overcome inflation right. should show that earnings growth going so forward. So revenues will outstrip any margin erosion. That's our view, and we're looking for those companies with the pricing power. So let's talk about Nike here, where it really was a supply issue on the guide down. They have a lot of brand heat. Demand has never been healthier for Nike. You can wear Nikes anywhere. I'm actually wearing a pair right now uh, as, we, as we do this video. What is this, an um, also <laughs> <laughs> Gary on Sarah. Also for Nike, uh, you know, they're shifting, their margins should increase as they move from whole wholesale to retail, more direct to consumer business. And the Vietnam factories are opening right now and they have scale. So when those ports do become less congested, Nike's going to have more power in that area. So we think going forward, actually, they can beat earnings next year. Is that a template, Sarah, for you through this earnings season? Does that story open up some opportunities? If we see more Nikes through earnings season, are they buys for you? I think likely we will see a lot of companies talking about supply chain issues and perhaps missing earnings because of it. Because of it. What we're looking at are those companies which have the power of the reopening behind them and can overcome those supply issues. Another name we like is Simon Property Group. You know, this is an A-mall company here. Malls are not dying. If you look at Simon Property, um, a lot of retailers want an omni-channel business, a combination of brick and mortar and online. Brick and mortar is becoming much more cost effective and to get that online traffic, you want to have foot traffic through your brick and mortar. If you look at something like Simon Property, it's trading at a discount in the REIT sector because it's a mall. So we think that's another strong play going forward. Banks are bouncing back as well with a steeper yield curve and high yields through the whole of this curve, Sarah. Where do you like the financials right now within the banks themselves? We've talked about this before. Goldman, very different to Bank of America. Take your pick in financials at the moment. What do you like? What kind of business model do you want exposure to? What we like about banks are the yields, but what we don't love about banks are the valuations. We don't think they look particularly cheap. So if you want to play yield on banks, you're exactly right. Look at a Bank of America that's pretty levered to yield. Uh, we like companies more like Morgan Stanley, which has more of a consistent, stable business in wealth management. And then we like our mid-cap bank, Fifth Third, which has more of a strong southeast uh, regional footprint. Also, they have a strong business model they're rolling out new products, a lot of cash on the balance sheet so they can really leverage the yields that are going up going forward. As you lean into a reflation type trade, how much does oil at $80 a barrel going up potentially to $100 a barrel challenge the view of, say, airlines, of certain cyclical stocks that might not be able to pass along the cost so easily? I mean, we don't love the cyclicals that don't have pricing power. So exactly that. We're not looking at maybe what are lower quality or highly cyclical companies at this point. Energy is going to be an issue. You have to have that pricing power and demand in place. So airlines are not necessarily a favorite for us. We would play companies related to airlines like Boeing, which has the leverage because they're supplying to airline companies, but less volatile and less cyclical than a pure airline. So today we're going to hear from Jerome Powell. We already heard uh, from Christine Lagarde of the ECB talking about the transitory supply chain disruptions, the transitory inflation inputs. How transitory, based on the ground level view of corporate balance sheets, do you expect the supply chain disruptions to be? You know, we don't think we're at the peak of inflation at this point. It will be mostly transitory, but there's going to be some permanence going forward, especially in larger pieces of inflation like wage inflation. So, you know, going forward, maybe inflation is more in the 2 to 3 percent range. The question is, how hot is that for the Fed? Powell does tend to lean dovish, so we're on the side that the Fed does not make an error here. Our view is even that interest rates may not increase as quickly right. as the market is thinking with the moderate growth that we expect next year. Sir, I've been going back and forth with Doug Cass all morning. I mean, we're not in speaking terms because the Yankees are crushing the Red Sox, but Cass is all bent out of shape about buy, yeah, or buybacks and, and all that. What's use of cash going to do given this maelstrom? 
I mean, it's interesting because you've seen really high levels of buybacks this year, and this kind of tells you that companies are not confident enough right now to spend on CapEx. Buybacks tend to be more flexible. However, we think that will likely peak going forward. We're seeing low inventory levels. Our view is that companies could shift more capital expenditure going forward and pull back on buybacks. So you know, maybe buybacks continue and peak around the end of this year, and then we switch to more of a CapEx-based model as companies become more confident as the Delta variant moves behind us.